Okay, I hope you enjoyed your lunch. We're gonna have a, a dessert of big data support services now. So I'm Mike Norman, I'm the director of the San Diego Supercomputer Center and uh, Ramesh Rao over here, the director of the Qualcomm Institute. Uh, he and I are uh, co-chairing this panel on uh, campus support for big data projects. Uh, my panelists are on the screen behind me. Um, Ilke Altintes, who is uh, the deputy uh, support leader for uh, research at San Diego Supercomputer Center. Uh, Christine Bagwell, who is the division director for IT systems and services at STSC. And Kevin Patrick, who is uh, in uh, the School of Medicine. He's a, a professor of family and preventative medicine. And he is what I call a big data doc. Now, we're going to modify the presentation order a little bit uh, so that it's not all SDSC and then QI. So uh, we're going to, uh, I'm gonna start with a few slides, just introducing the topic of the panel. Um, and then we'll have Ilke Altintes, Kevin Patrick, and finish up with Christine, okay? So this is a 30 minute uh, uh, schedule item. Uh, we're going to, to together talk for no more than 20 minutes and then we'll have 10 minutes for question and answer after the presentation. So not after the individual talks, but after all of them. Um, and uh, Ramesh will be moderating that uh, Q&A. Okay, fine. So um, if there was one message I want to give to you today is that SDSC and Cal IT2 Qualcomm Institute are platforms for uh, big data research and applications. And fundamentally what we encapsulate are three things. Uh, resources, of course, uh, computing, storage, visualization. Uh, we heard about the big tile displays this morning. But more importantly, uh, we house expertise and collaboration, collaborative people. Um, our investigators love to collaborate with faculty and other campus researchers in order to make that interdisciplinary magic happen. So think of us first when you want to know, who do I collaborate with to do something in big data? And then finally, SDSC operates some uh, for fee data services that you'll be hearing about at the end of this panel. Okay, a few slides on SDSC. Um, many of you probably think that we're the Campus Research Bureau. Wrong. We are an organized research unit. And our research focus is the development and application of new tools for digitally enabled scholarship. So our research focus is the tools that you use to do your research, okay? Got that right? Now, we also operate some big systems and some services, but that is not our fundamental role on campus. Uh, so we uh, research next generation hardware, middleware, application software, and data services. Uh, finally, big data is our current strategic thrust, and uh, we have a very popular bumper sticker that uh, you can probably buy on eBay. So uh, uh, a few years ago, as director, I established a couple of big data centers of excellence within STSC, so these are centers within a center, if you will. Uh, one is called the Center for Large-Scale Data Systems Research. That's directed by Chaitan Baru, who you will hear a little later on in the education panel. Um, and its focus is the systems, the hardware and software systems that are evolving very rapidly to support the big data economy. Jim Short, who you see there, is uh, a guy with a business background, and he's interested in, in the value of data. What is the corporate value of data? Um, a second uh, center of excellence is PACE, the Predictive Analytics Center of Excellence. This is sort of the other side of the coin from big data systems. It's how are they being used uh, to, to make corporate decisions. So predictive analytics, business intelligence, machine learning, data mining, these are all within the purview of PACE. And this is led by Natasha Bollock, who will have a 10-minute talk later on today. Um, to give you an example of what PACE does um, in the way of a big data application is the campus's energy microgrid, which has 100,000 sensor points that are providing streams of data that have to go somewhere to be collected and analyzed. And so uh, one of Natasha's 
uh, Center's projects is to do the uh, data mining on the behavior of our uh, microgrid. And then my last slide is to tell you that um, in 2015, we'll be deploying an exciting new NSF-funded supercomputer called Comet. Comet uh, you know, is an astronomical thing that has a long tail when it sweeps past the sun. Comet computer is designed for the long tail of science. This means that this will be a platform that will be get, easy to get on and easy to use across uh, all scientific domains and all areas of academic scholarship. And so um, I think uh, the way you should think about this is if you have some complicated big data workflow where you need a lot of storage and a lot of compute, think about running that on top of Comet in, in a little over a year. Okay, so that was uh, the end of my introductory remarks. I want to then hand off uh, to our first panelist, Ilke Altintas. So I'm here to talk about the collaborations and research at SDSC. I work as the deputy coordinator for research uh, in addition to my uh, own research on scientific workflows. And as most of you know, SDSC has been a data science leader uh, for more than two decades since its introduction actually in the 80s. And uh, we have top class researchers, highly cited researchers, and the unique part of these researchers is really an ability to build infrastructure around their research and to develop tools that are highly used and utilized by other cyber infrastructure projects. So this has been applied in essence to many large scale uh, data management integration and visualization and analysis projects, including uh, all areas of research in the domain sciences. And as Mike mentioned, we have two well-established data centers, and uh, we also have a new initiative on education of data science in addition to the ones we had over the years. I think Chaitan will uh, talk about that in the education panel today. So as I mentioned, STSC researchers uh, are principal investigators. Uh, they have their research groups, and uh, they also have groups uh, combined uh, uh, that, are, that are combinations of researchers and developers and domain experts. So this makes a nice combination uh, for collaborations in a sense that uh, enables um, infrastructure uh, portals, it enables uh, scientific research in different disciplines, combined with the best practices in computer science and other uh, technological advances. Um, so some examples I collected here has been, you know, the GIS on the brain has been, basically we have a geospatial sciences laboratory uh, that actually applied geoscientific, um, the geospatial te techniques to brain mapping. Uh, so you see that it's already becoming really interdisciplinary when you combine different researchers like yourself together talking in one place. And we have uh, quite a big trust on geosciences uh, from Enable of uh, Mexico's Health Atlas and um, wildfire management and uh, all the EarthCube uh, related initiatives. And uh, we have a thrust on predictive analytics, uh, as Natasha Balak will mention today. And we have, I think, in all domain sciences, uh, we have labs that combine uh, supercomputing and data management technologies with the domain sciences. And the goal here is not to do it all by ourselves, but really to collaborate. So uh, we have a big uh, culture around collaborations. And um, I hope from this uh, day, some other collaborations come out. So as a last slide, uh, I want to say we have been collaborating with some campus researchers and faculty and in pretty much uh, all the UCSD divisions and departments. Uh, so there's a list of some of the awards and uh, proposals uh, that were uh, done together. In addition to our national and international collaborations, uh, we really like to collaborate on campus because this gives us quite a breadth of uh, interesting problems to work with. Thank you. Okay, hey, thanks. Uh, Kevin Patrick here from uh, Family Preventive Medicine and um, 
Qualcomm Institute. And we're setting up my slides momentarily. Here we go, okay. Okay, so platforms for data intensive research. What, what sorts of things do we have for, uh, for opportunities for collaboration in, at the Qualcomm Institute? I'm gonna talk about three of them. Uh, and our, our research, very important to sort of frame our research. Our research is framed around this concept of the exposed zone. Essentially half of premature morbidity mortality is as yet unexplained and probably related to things like environmental exposures and behaviors and things like this. So what, that's what focuses our research. There are known and unknown sort of hypothesized pathways for this. And the way that we have typically measured this over time is through self-report, through periodic biomarkers that are taken, or through measurement, crude measurements across the environment in which we make inferences about what happens to individuals. Things are changing, as we all know. We're all carrying devices. There are lots of new devices that we can use. So our research is really trying to leverage both person-worn technologies and newer sensors to begin to understand the exposome. The first project I want to highlight is the PALMS project, Personal Activity Location Measurement System. This is funded in the Gene Environment Initiative, a portfolio of projects that funded better tools and technologies that can tease out these relationships between gene environment exposures. Uh, we focused on activity devices and GPS devices, and these are GPS devices not in the phone, but devices that actually have better battery life that people could carry around for a period of time. And what this allows us is the ability to characterize where people go over long periods of time to get a better understanding of what they might get exposed to in the environment. So it helps us construct a picture of a, a day, a week, a month, any length of time that, that you might imagine uh, for a particular person's exposure. And importantly, we can allow researchers to create a study. We can allow research, re researchers to bring whatever devices it is that they might have coupled with GPS, including additional sensor devices. They can bring the data into our palm system and collaborate with one another in a study, and then it allows also the reuse and the re re uh, 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 analysis of, of those data as well. We have over 100 researchers around the world who are now using palms, and, we, and we're taking this in a number of exciting different directions, coupling it with GIS-related data, uh, uh, using it in seniors and children and whatnot, so it's been a pretty exciting project. Second project is CICOR, Cyber Infrastructure for Comparative Effectiveness Research in Cancer. This is an NCI-funded project where we're collaborating with, with colleagues at MD Anderson Hospital. And here, essentially, we are developing a system that allows capture of information from people in the context of clinical trials to get a better understanding, an objective understanding of patient-reported outcomes, which are now typically gathered by only self-report. We can capture these things in real time, bring them in, and share them with researchers, share them with others who are, who are, who are working in this area. And we leverage the home health hub that Phil Rios and others at, at Cal IT2 have been developing to capture increasingly de more types of data from individuals in the context of, again, cancer comparativeness care. We hope to continue this. Our grant is being reviewed at, uh, at NIH uh, on the 10th of next month. And if so, we hope to expand use across the country. Right now, we only have users at MD Anderson. Uh, but hopefully this will scale. And then the third project I wanted to touch on is an NSF-funded project uh, where we're looking at multi-level factors that relate to health. Here, we're taking the audacious step of essentially trying to, trying to wrap our minds around all forms of data relevant to health, genomic data, microbiomic data, medical record data, personal health data, things from Fitbits and things that people might, might, might carry themselves, environmental data, and public health related data. So imagine all of the forms of data that you might be able to bring together uh, to, uh, to begin to understand individual or population health. Providing health care and, and population health requires reasoning across a variety of these forms of data. We too often stay in one particular stovepipe, the medical data or the genomic data or whatever. We don't attempt to bring them together. Diabetes uh, management, for example, or asthma care. We really need to integrate and pull all forms of data together and think about them in that way. Unfortunately, these are tough to integrate because they all sit in different uh, uh, silos, physical activity data and devices, social data and social network uh, companies, uh, weight data, uh, genomic data, et cetera. You can imagine where these things are sitting. And so how do, you, how do we think about pulling them together? So our goal here is, is to develop a model in San Diego that will be a platform for us to use as researchers, but also apps and services developers to pull together all of these forms of data and create this whole health information model of an individual or a population. And we have this happy accident in San Diego of having lots of components that allow us to do this. Qual we have Qualcomm developing their, pro their programs, or a very proactive health and human services department. We have the San Diego Beacon, uh, which is the electronic medical record exchange in the community. We have one of the few communities where, in fact, this works. And San Diego Association of Governments, which has very rich GIS uh, data sources. 
And so our challenges in this are, are new data types, dynamic environments, and doing this, modeling it in a particular environment where we can capture all of these forms of data. So we, we're, we're working on building on an architecture which will bring these in to this Delphi model. We are opening this architecture up to a variety of, of entities that might be interested in using it, from app developers to clinical environments to public health and population health folks. And we're, we're, we're using working with data scientists, Dr. Baru, Dr. Papa Constantin now, and others to help us think through how we develop a model that will allow us to interface. We've got, we're talking about visualization approaches and creating essentially this ecosystem that allows us to bring analytics to all of these forms of data in one particular geographic area, which is, again, very important if we believe that health is place. And we know for a fact that much of one's health is, in fact, associated with that. So this is going to be, a one of, I think, a very unique research platform that, um, with, uh, with luck, will be successful uh, and, and allow us to do some pretty innovative work. Happy to chat more about this with folks uh, as, as we go along. So that's it. And talking about potential applications that can be developed on top of this as well. All right. Thanks. Hi, I'm Christine Bagwell. I'm here from the San Diego Supercomputer Center, and I'd like to talk to you about SDSC Cloud. Uh, so you heard a little bit about the Supercomputer Center already. As our name belies, we're known for HPC. We have a brand new grant uh, in concert with Cali T2. We're bringing some high-speed networking to campus. And you might have been hearing about a new MAS program that will be coming out next year, uh, put on with Computer Science Department, uh, Data Sciences, and Engineering. Uh, along with that, we also are a leader in cloud-based computing, particularly the uh, open source-based OpenStack. SDSC Cloud is, two, is currently two and a half petabytes raw. We have two clusters, one here at the Supercomputer Center and one in Oakland at Office of the President for DR. But aside from talking to you about compute and storage, I want to talk to you about what SDSC Cloud uh, is retooling in Cloud V2 to, to do. And it's about a lot of the principles that you've heard about today. Being able to find your data, ensuring that there's a workflow that makes, that makes you tag it, at least in a minimal sort of way, so that you or that those in your lab can find the data later. Having a place that can scale with your data stores so that you're not having to worry that your computing person has provisioned it correctly, that you can put up as much as you need based on bursts in your own workflow, um, know that it is next to large uh, data stores, so you're not having to think about these things that right now probably take a lot of your time, especially if you're working with big data. Being able to throw up web servers or compute servers as needed and take them down so that you're not provisioning whole just uh, racks of servers and, and making the best use of your, of your resources. And then also being able to get to that nirvana of sharing data with each other or publishing it along with uh, other, you know, your, your proceedings. So uh, what we've built is a research platform for large scale data. And the reason is that we're watching what's going on in industry and elsewhere with research computing. And we're seeing that the architectures are generally cloud-based when you get to this scale of data. Um, that's what Netflix has touted with uh, their way of doing database architectures. Uh, I was entertained to find there's another DAAS, not data as a service, but decisions as a service that is largely cloud-based. And of course, Rackspace's own big data platform is Hadoop on the cloud. The, the reason that we are using an open source platform is not just because we need to roll it our, ourselves, but it's so that we can innovate on the back end for our research use cases, the things that all of you are doing, the things that we're doing at the Supercomputer Center. So what is data as a service? Well, this is a notational diagram to really show you that there are layers and that we, that we roll a bunch of different services that we have packaged together rather than just saying, here's some storage, make use of it. So a uh, first step in this is to partner with Globus Online that I think was cited in a couple earlier talks this morning that's um, largely been known uh, in years past for grid FTP, uh, but is also really becoming a great way to do web-based transport of large data stores. So we already have endpoints established for all of our national systems, as, and we're working to establish a front end for our storage system so that you can move things around 
between these different places. Uh, Chaitan Baru, who's here today, he uh, and Vishnu, who's also here today, um, have a pilot called Share Data Space that does this data as a service on top of SDSC Cloud and basically gives you a place to throw your stuff up, it ensures that you tag it appropriately, and that it allows you to move things around between different, um, different resources and then share it out with people in and around the system, as well as any collaborators around the world. So I think I mentioned this a little bit, uh, but we also heard this in earlier talks, that you do need to think about your architecture at the outset. Um, part of this is because of speed, working with different collaborators, but it can also really rack up charges. Um, if, especially if you're doing something that's very chatty, um, you can incur a lot of additional charges using Amazon Web Services. Another thing that you get with SDSC is that we can expose some of the logs to you. We can tell you what is happening with your program. Do you need to package your transport into smaller chunks, for example? Now, um, I want to show you a couple different examples that we're doing with our data as a service specializations. There we go. This one is BioKepler, and this is an object oriented way of making use of storage and compute sources. Um, so you can actually program in your own scientific workflow. And this is running on our beta OpenStack Nova instance. This is, I know, super, super tiny. This is the Neurosciences Information Framework. Um, one of the PIs is, or co-PIs is here, Amarnath Gupta. And what it does is it takes many different data sets that would normally be apples and oranges and gives you a way to search across them by building ontologies. And so what we would like to do on our data as a, serv sorry, data as a service platform is say that you're in economics or say you're in IRPS, something completely separate, be able to build your own on ontologies across all of your different data sets. And you heard a little bit about PACE. Uh, we would like you to be able to take one of our data mining workshops and order up our starter kit, maybe with a specialization for retail or for energy. So with that, I'll uh, open it up to the panel discussion. Just stay up there. Okay. For a So um, we have time for questions. Uh, we have mics that we would like to pass out before you pose your questions. We have about uh, five minutes or so for questions from the audience. While you're gathering your thoughts, let me ask the obvious question of Kevin. Uh, do you address issues of privacy, especially since you're working with health data? Yes. Yeah. We have, we have, we have. <laughs> We do much, much more so in the uh, specifically in the uh, in the in the uh, Cycor project, where uh, again HIPAA compliant uh, issues. But we're planning to build out uh, Delphi in ways that allow HIPAA, FISMA, all, all the new compliance things. So we're working with Lucilla and Machado and Claudio on that huge issue. But but I will say we have we are also exploring orthogonally uh, the the fact that privacy is in a lot of these new data forms is not a monolithic concept. We're finding in our health data exploration project with the Robert Johnson Foundation. That that it, it, people feel differently about this as far as how we might actually think about handling different know, forms of health. I noticed you had Facebook on your slide. That's so right. Yeah. They certainly don't care for privacy. And if people volunteer <laughs> their information, then we're more than happy to have them have it. Christine, do you provide services that honors uh, HIPAA requirements? Uh, SDSC does. We have a, a cloud called Sherlock Cloud, which is uh, provides kind of the whole end-to-end -end solution if you have HIPAA or FISMA needs. That's not my area, but in our center. Did you want to add to that, Mike? No? Sherlock. Sherlock is the Solved. answer. Solved. <laughs> we have Sherlock. a question for Sherlock.com. Check uh, it out. Y yes, I do. I, I just wanted to ask Kevin. So are you, so the, the information sources that you listed, are, they, are you expecting them to give the data to you, or is this going to be independent from a lot of the, whether it's the Fitbits or the Facebooks? Uh, very good question, and and we're my, my 
we would hope that people would, uh, that these data would be accessible in, in, in sort of uniform ways, but they're not. My, my dream here in San Diego is to create probably a donate your data initiative for some of the personal uh, related data. Many people we know are willing to do this. We are connecting with the San Diego Beacon Project with respect to the medical related data. So we're, we'll be developing data use agreements with them and, and, and use anonymized data that might come from other existing studies that are happening, but again, the, the, the best path, I think, for that particular, this particular project is to get enough people who are willing to donate a variety of data for us to begin to experiment with the person-level data, many of the geographically uh, characterized data, and other public health data we can access and, and integrate anyway. Thank you. Uh, Amarnath, I heard you threatening to ask some tough questions. <laughs> <laughs> we have a question back there. Uh, hi. Sorry, I want to know if uh, if your service include chip design because now I have an idea about um, bacterial biomarker, bacterial biomarker for food safety, and uh, if I identify biomarker, and I would like to commercialize the chip to identify the bacteria strain, and uh, I don't know if you have such a, such a technique skill to uh, come to do the chip design and the device design, and then commercialize. I, I think that's a question for Rajesh Gupta. <laughs> Rajesh, are you here? <laughs> there he is. <laughs> do you make do you do you make not, chips? Not Lab on a chip. Lab on a chip. Lab on a chip initiatives that might help generate data from biomarkers and things of that sort. Are there initiatives? Uh, <clears throat> uh, if there was an online thinking, this is it. Uh, <laughs> So, uh, you know, I go back to our faculty who are at the intersection with biology and um, medicine. Uh, we have a program with them, bioinformatics uh, program and systems biology program. And I asked them, uh, just as an institutional bean counter, uh, what can we do in terms of building laboratory infrastructure? Can I, can I buy a mass spectrometer? Should I do this or should I do that to, um, to create more and more data? Because I often feel that if you're the data source, you are the first one to infer from that as a source. And what I understand, that there are opportunities that are much more on the back end of how the data is generated. This may not be answering the question, by the way. But I wanted to get it out anyway. Um, uh, uh, Spoken like a good administrator. <laughs> but, but I also understand that when it comes to data, lab on chip or, or, or data that we're new uh, as saying and new uh, technologies that are coming out, they're moving so rapidly in the commercial market space that actually our ability to process and our unique strengths to process is a lot more important than being able to, to generate that data internally. So I am in a conflict myself. I would love to see some infrastructure here in which we have the data source but also, uh, you know, the, the faculty who work in that space have been looking for ability to, uh, to, um, to sort of build the ability to process that data. So anyway. uh, we have time for one more question, but let me add that uh, there are some researchers, faculty here who are not in the room. Joe Wang in nanoengineering, Hua Lo in ECE, have been working on, uh, you know, these lab on chip designs. So. Question to the left. Yeah, this is Jonathan Wadanabe, the School of Pharmacy. So is, in terms of, I think this is for Kevin, is that going to be built towards something like uh, eventually real-time decision support? Uh, yes, uh, with luck. Uh, and uh, I think we're teeing up a little bit what Otto might talk about, about 911 data. But that there, that's actually a great interest of the of the folks at the San Diego uh, Health, uh, Health uh, Beacon, essentially the Health Information Exchange. And so we're talking with them about this coupling and, 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 and bringing more proximate to any particular event that would be necessary, these forms of data. A lot of work to be involved in that, but that's a vision. So we are at the end of this session. Thank you very much for being on this panel.